Cameron Buford here. We've got Mr. Jared Cook, tight end, Los, uh, Los Angeles Chargers. How you feeling? Training camp, we're at the end of training camp. How you feel with training camp, man? Good, man. Um, Birm Birmingham, Alabama. You, you were born there. Did you grow up there? Did you move to Georgia? Talk yeah. about. So I, I was born in Birmingham. Okay. Uh, grew up there until about the sixth grade. Okay, and okay. Moved to Georgia. So you got some experiences there? Yeah. What was that like? There's a lot of history in Birmingham. What was that like? Yeah, uh, like you said, a lot of history. Uh, I grew up learning about black history from the time I was little. Uh, just about everything that my parents can do it, my grandparents can do it. Um, and just what the climate was like back in like the 60s and 50s and 40s. And, and they just told me the things that they went through. Yeah, so that's an ingrained of people who grew up with here, huh? In, yeah. in Birmingham. Yeah. For okay, sure. so South, South Carolina, why you choose South Carolina? Uh, I was a receiver at the time coming out of high school. Okay. And, uh, Coach Spurry was coming there. And he's known for going <laughs> to his He's going to receiver. get you some numbers, huh? Yeah, for sure. Especially in the SEC where it was, it was predominantly a lot of run offenses. Sure. Uh, I knew that he was going to bring a different style to the game. So that's mainly what I, why I chose to go there. Okay. And you get drafted, you, you go to Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Um, man, explosive season there. CK goes for 2,000. Yeah. What was that like to play with CK? And then you got Vince Young there coming, uh, a high profile rookie coming to the league. What was that? Talk about that a little bit. Man, it was amazing. Uh, you want to talk about it? I I've always been a fan of the NFL and just sports in general. Okay. Up. So uh, even to this day, whenever I see guys that have played in the league and they put their time in, and Hall of Famers, I still get excited like a kid. And, um, uh, you know, seeing VY and watch, watching him do uh, play the national championship, win the national championship, watching CJ and the whole line and Algie Crump and the guys block for him for those two 2K seasons, man. It was just electrifying and amazing. Uh, probably one of the best backs I played with. And just seeing him, uh, the way he outruns run, guys on defense, guys that's supposed to run four threes. Right, and, right. And dudes that claim to be fast, him outrunning them and outrunning every angle that they set is. It was amazing. So that had to be pretty fun then. Did you have an aha moment um, in, the, in as your rookie your rookie year um, that kind of, I don't know, maybe somebody caught you that you thought you was out running and, and caught chased you down from behind or, or blocked the pass that you thought was in your hands? What was your aha moment? Man, there was a lot of <laughs> a lot of them getting cussed out by, getting cussed out by OCs, okay. by Hyman Dingley. He cussed me out all the time, but I knew he – he, 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 he meant well. wanted me exactly. Right. He wanted me to succeed. Okay. Um, you know, uh, getting concussed. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, just just different moments. A lot of different moments. It's like hey, you're here now. You got okay. you got to do stuff different. You gotta you gotta you know man up and step into the mold. Okay. So you get a chance to play with. Uh, you say you're a fan of the league. When you put on the Green Bay uniform. And you go in the Lambeau Field, kind of talk about what that was like. And then you got your quarterback, who's a Hall of Famer, Super MVP, Super Bowl winner, Aaron Rodgers. Talk about that whole thing. Is that uh, I know you know you can, you're confident in your skills, and you, you know you can play at this level. Yeah. But was that a was that an aha moment, if you will? Yeah, absolutely. My whole experience in Green Bay was uh, just full of uh, rediscoveries and just eye-opening experiences. Uh, Green Bay is a very historic place with, uh, that prides itself on its history. So you got to experience that firsthand. They have a museum right there on site. Uh, you get to learn about the history and all the great players that played there. Great players to come back and, uh, and dedicate their time to us there as well. And just playing with A-Rod, man, just one of the best in the business. Uh, his accuracy, his uh, you know, his, his wits about him as he's playing, his ability to create plays and extend plays and find open receivers when they don't even look open. Uh, but playing with him was, like I said, it was full of hot, hot moments. He used to set, you, know, you, you saw uh, this year at camp when he set the big hoop up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every day. Really? And Same. it's just like launching it from one or two, one or two yards takes. and it the bottom of the net bottom of the net every wow. time and you never got tired of seeing it because it's hard to find quarterbacks that can do stuff like that in the sleep. Sure. It's hard to find quarterbacks anywhere that can do stuff right, like right, that. Right. So to be up to, to be able to experience that and see it firsthand was, was it was a blessing for real. And okay. to be able to play with him and, and the things we used to see him do in games, it was just 
it, it never got over. Okay. That's football. Right. Like, he just takes it to a new level. Okay. And then you leave there, and then you go play with Drew Brees, who now leads the league in yards, completion percentage. I mean, uh, there's a couple other number one stats that he has. What was a, another Super Bowl winner? What was the traits that carried over? Um, if I'm not mistaken, and Rodgers is a little bit bigger. He's not uh, – Brees is a little short. But his um, – his work ethic and kind of sets him apart, if I'm not mistaken. What did you see? What were the similarities between those guys? Man, Drew was another guy that just took the game to the next level. Um, he's always at work on first. Uh, he always takes his craft and tries to extend it. Knows defenses in and out. He's going to get you to the right play every time. He's going to make sure that he gets to the right check every time. He knows what the defense is doing before they're doing it. He sits out there and he goes through his progressions. He goes through his check downs. He knows, he knows, he knows where every player is going to be, and you're supposed to be in that right spot. So that way you practice it so much, you already know where you, what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. So the ball can be released on time, and you can be in the right spot on time. He used to stay after practice and go through every read and every play by himself. Before games, after walkthroughs, he used to stay on the field and go through every read and every play by himself. It, it was just a different level of study and a different level of commitment uh, that he took to be able to be the best in the game. That forced you to become a better receiver, better tight end, better receiver? Yeah, absolutely. It makes you up your level. Yeah. Um, because you know that you're going to be out here. Um, and you know these guys want to be good at the front. Okay. So you better show up at the front as well. Now, I don't want to compare Justin to uh, Rodgers or Brees, but obviously his young stud had a hell of a year. Were you able to see from afar kind of what he did last year? Um, what are you seeing? What are the similarities that you see in Justin, like that you saw in those guys? Um, clearly he's not there yet, but what are some of the same things that you saw you see in him that you saw in those guys? Man, he, he's able to extend plays, strong arm, um, able to fit the ball in tight windows and get the ball there to you fast. Um, he's, get, he's, he's working on getting the offense down to a lot of young quarterbacks I've seen in this offense. Um, it's hard for them to be able to get the schemes and things like that, but he's getting it. Um, and he's working really easy. Like, it is no problem for him. Um, and he just continue to just show and prove every day in camp and in practice the throws he can make, uh, how we can push the ball down the field. He, he can throw like 60 yard bombs easy and just as accurate as he is. It's all fun. You having fun with him so far? I yeah, know it's only sure. been since mini camping now, but you you having fun with him? Yeah. You expecting big things out of him? Yeah, for sure. Um, one question um, I kind of asked some of myself uh, or some of my friends is kind of what prevents the sophomore slump? Obviously, he had a big year last year. Um, the NFL didn't know about him, kind of caught, a, caught some teams all surprised. But what prevents that sophomore slump? Yeah, I don't know. You know uh, I think it's on, uh, you know, a lot of times in this league, it's a copycat league. And, uh, you know, it, it happens with a lot of players. But they might, you know, just not a sophomore slump. It, it could be any year where they ball, and then the next year, people have time to study their tape, study their film, uh, you know, and actually get to know them a little bit more than previously when they had no film to study. Right. It's like the first game after preseason, you know, you have no film, but after that first game, you start getting more and more film. Um, I don't know what what you can do to prevent that, you know, just continue to study your game and help your game. Uh, this is a growing league and a constant growing league where defenses are always changing and doing new things. So you got to actually grow and change with it and be able to understand what defenses are trying to do to attack you and be able to come over the challenge for that. Gotcha. Did you play with Corey and Green Bay? Yeah. He was young. How is Corey different this in, with this team than he was previously? <laughs> he's still all pro center, huh? Yeah, man. Corey is, you know, he's the type of, he's a leader that takes the reins on things. Okay. He wants to be the guy that, um, you know, uh, makes calls at the line and takes it in his hands to be able to recognize defenses and how they're lined up. And, uh, you know, and, and, and he prides himself on that, being able to reach. Uh, different different techniques and different noses. Some of the best noses in the game be able to cut them like that. Uh, Corey's just all around, just like you said, all things. Now, 
you guys had a couple preseason games. Obviously, you didn't, you didn't play, but that first practice, uh, uh, fans fest where you just practice in the game. And I see you on the sidelines, uh, faking running routes, working on your hands. Uh, preseason, uh, last preseason game, I believe I saw the same thing. What's up with that, man? You've been in the league what twelve years. You know how to catch by now. What, what are you? Why are you going through these drills? <laughs> man, you always have to work on your skill, right? That's what you do the most, right? Okay. You out here uh, grinding it day in, day out. You got to be the best or try to be the best at what you do. So you have to constantly hone in your skills. Never, no ball is ever the same. No ball ever comes in the same. So you have to constantly work angles, constantly work your eyes, constantly work your hands all the way to the top. You know, it's just constantly improving your craft and never being satisfied. Always be hungry to get back. Okay, okay. If you weren't playing football in the NFL, what would you be doing? Uh, probably an entrepreneur. Okay. Uh, real estate. Okay. Uh, maybe uh, buying and flipping. Buy uh, different, different types of properties, commercial real estate, as well as residential. Is that your future? Uh, possibly. Okay, you doing any of that now? You got any, you picked up some properties in Georgia and uh, Bama? Some in Georgia, some in South Carolina. Uh, okay. Previously in Florida. Okay. Uh, I have an online men's website called Nifty Genius that I started. One more time, one more time. Nifty Genius. Nif Nif what's that about? Um, it's an online men's lifestyle uh, and also clothing line. It's okay. a website that I started okay. uh, back in uh, 2015. Okay. And uh, it's doing pretty well right now, even though, you know, through COVID and everything, it's just doing well. So just continue to grow that. Continue to come out with, with, with new styles and things that people enjoy. Wood started the Nifty Genius. Uh, I went to school for retail. Okay. And um, it's a it's a clothing company called Southern Time. Okay. And those guys started in South Carolina. We okay. had the same teachers, and uh, I always had trouble finding bigger clothes for guys with nice. longer arms, right, right, right. a bigger frame. Right, right. So uh, we make business casual and casual clothes for okay. guys that can fit up to like a 2X. You make them uh, for fat guys? Uh, you make stuff for yeah, fat guys? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let the people know once again, what is it? It's called Nifty Genius, nifty-genius.com. Okay, um, I appreciate it, man. I, I want to ask you before I let you go, um, Austin Eckler, you obviously you play with Alvin Kamara. Uh, Lombardi bringing that kind of same scheme over here um, and, and tell me where I'm wrong I'm not going to expect a Alvin Kamara performance from Austin Eckler this season but what do you expect from Austin Eckler this season in this offense? He's going to be a big back for us strong, strong running uh, able to find holes and hit gaps fast and get, get downhill fast so uh, and able to also catch the ball out of the backfield, just like AK. Yeah. And AK was able to do it all. You can run him on wheel routes, you can run him on shoots out of the backfield, but also be able to catch screens. Uh, you know, he's, he's versatile like AK, which is what you need in this type of offense. You need a versatile back that can be able to do it all. And he's sneaky fast. And they both have some crazy workout routines, if you will. You seen, you seen some yeah. Austin stuff? Yeah, Is Austin being there shrugging. And lifting weights, then we just be looking at him like, <laughs> you know, serious? it could be a light day. Yeah. Right, right, right. It could be a light lifting day. Nah, he's and serious he about that. He still got heavy weight on the bar. He's, he's, he's serious about that. Yeah, for sure. Last one, I know I said that was it, but last one for you. Why has Keenan Allen been underrated in the NFL? Why do you think that's been? Uh, I never thought Keenan was underrated. You didn't? Okay. Okay. I've known Keenan for a while now. And, okay. And I've seen him. I've seen practice and game tape from him before. Okay. But seeing him work and practice, um, it's kind of like Devontae Adams. Okay. Just how they release, uh, ways that they work they route on the second level, ways that they give, you know, that extra uh, fake, head fake, out fake, in fake, and are able to get open and share the defenders just so easy. I just feel like it's amazing. Yeah. Because nobody... It's not a lot of receivers that have that type of feet, that have that type of uh, wherewithal to know where they are on the field and where to break and what open areas to break to be able to get the ball, catch it, and get more. And Keenan has all the tools to be able to do that. It's amazing to watch him in practice and to watch the things that he does firsthand because he's a true pro and he really, it, it, it's like, 
all great receivers have their own style. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All great receivers have their own style on how they get open or how they juke, how they how they fake a guy in and out and get their release. Mm -hmm. And Keenan has his own style that you just can't teach. He can go backwards and then be able to stop on a dime and go forward full speed. Pretty, pretty incredible. It, it's, it's amazing. Pretty nice. Okay. Yeah, sure. Hey, thank you for your time. Let the people know where they can find you and then they'll give the website one more time. Uh, find you on social media, I mean. Oh, uh, my IG is uh, jerrycook87 and my website is nifty-genius.com. Appreciate your time. Cameron Buford, Voice of the Fans. Thank you, Jared Cook. Well, how are you spending your, your week off? You got a week off. I mean, are you do you know the schedule yet? No, I'm chilling, man. Okay, all right, chilling yeah, in the beach. You going to the beach? You in SoCal now? Uh, I hope so. Okay. Maybe I can catch some waves. Man. Okay, thank you for your time, <laughs> big dog. Appreciate it.